This lecture is about the DC transfer function in LTSpice. .tf is the syntax in LTSpice to find the DC small signal transfer function of a voltage or current due to small variation of an independent source. I want to emphasize that we are looking at a small signal, not large signal. So output is a dialog box that gives low frequency gain input and output impedance of a circuit. The syntax is .tf followed by voltage or current as output and the independent source. For example, .tf vout vin means the DC gain of vout due to small variation in vin. This is the first example. Here we have the same voltage divider as shown before. Vin is the independent source. The DC voltage sensing gain and the V sense is R2 over R1 plus R2, which is 1 over 10. To run this simulation, you go to simulation and edit simulation command. After that, we can choose DC transfer as the type of simulation. So we type V, V sense as the output and the V1 as the independent source. So once you run the simulation, you will see the dialog box shown below, which gives the transfer function as 0.1. This is the DC gain of the voltage divider. Also, the input impedance is found as 100 kilo ohm, which is the impedance when you look at the network from the input point of view. So Z in equals to R1 plus R2 gives 100 kilo ohm. The output impedance is found at 9 kilo ohm. So if you look at the point of V sense, when the V1 is disabled and replaced by a short circuit, the Z out is simply equals to uh, R1 in parallel with R2 gives 9 kilo ohm. An emitter follower is illustrated in this example. The input voltage is at base and the output voltage is at the emitter. The power supply is added at the collector. If you look at the large signal in transient simulation in time domain as shown here, you can find the V in as 2 volt and V out as 1.44 volt. So the output voltage is V in minus the voltage drop over VBE. This is a large signal. However, the small signal gain is different from the large signal gain. For small signal, we only look at very small perturbation over a particular operating point. So LTSpice found the transfer function as 0.90A, which is very close to 1. The circuit has quite large input impedance and small output impedance. So therefore, this circuit is often used as a voltage buffer. We can use DC sweep over V1 to verify our results on the previous slide. The upper figure is a large signal transfer function of V out over V in when you run the DC sweep over V1 from 0 to 3 volt. The horizontal axis is V in and vertical axis is V out. If we zoom in at 2 volt, we will notice the slope is 0 0.98, which is exactly the transfer function found by the LT spice. This slide gives an introduction about zener doubt. A zener doubt is a particular type of doubt that can work in both the first and the third quadrants of the IV curve. The zener doubt allows current to flow not only from the anode to the cathode, but also in the reverse direction when the zener voltage is reversed. The dynamic impedance of zener doubt is defined as a small voltage change due to the small current change at a particular disorbitating point, usually it's in the third quadrant, when the zener doubt is reverse biased. So when the zener doubt is reverse biased between 0 to Vr, it has some small leakage current. Once the reverse voltage is beyond the zener voltage Vz, it breaks down very quickly and able to conduct quite high current, while maintaining the similar Vz around this vicinity. Therefore, the zener delta can climb its terminal voltage within a small range. This is example number four. We want to measure the 
Zener's dynamic impedance, or just called the impedance here. We use the transfer function syntax to find the transfer function where the V in actually is the output equals to the terminal voltage of this Zener delta, and I1 is the input current. The result is known as the Zener impedance. LT spice gives about 16 ohms for the transfer function. If we look at the data sheet, uh, at 5 milliamps, the Zener impedance is given about 10 ohm. Although the LT spice gives slightly different result from the data sheet, it allows you to fully understand the meaning of Zener impedance in this example. Similarly, we can verify the Zener impedance by using the DC sweep over the current source, I1. We sweep it from 0 0.1 milliamps to 10 milliamps. Uh, if we look at the vicinity of I1 equals to 5 milliamps, uh, by using the cursors, we can find the slope is 16 ohm, which matches with the transfer function without. So this is the Zener's impedance at 5 milliamp. In the final example, we want to evaluate the Zener dial as a voltage regulator by using the transfer function. Here we have V1 as the input voltage and V out as the output voltage. We have a series resistor R1 as 1 kilo ohm and the same Zener delta as before to regulate the output voltage around 6.2 volt. By transfer function in both cases of without load and with load, the transfer function is a small value around 0.02 the transfer function is a small signal voltage gain of V out over V in. It means when you have an input line disturbance at V in, the variation at V out is simply the change at V in times the small transfer function, resulting in a much smaller V out change. This means V out is less sensitive to the variation at V in. So this is what we want for a good voltage regulator. Also, by adding a load, we noted that the output impedance is slightly increased. The reason is that the Zener dial has less current because some current is flowing through R2, and the reverse voltage over Zener dial is reduced towards the origin. As a result, the Zener impedance is increased. This is the reference I used for these slides. It's all done for this lecture. Thank you.